Hi, I'm Marcy with the Region of Waterloo Library. My colleague Jen and I are back this week with some tips for learning outdoors. There's lots of learning happening out here. And the first tip I'm going to share, share with you is about the string that Jen had in her learning tool kit. This string I've cut into a standard one meter length or 10 centimeter length. And what you can do with this is have your child find something that's exactly this long or maybe something that's twice as long or something that's half as long. They'll get good at estimating how big things are and then checking with the real standard measurement. You can also use this string to check out the circumference of different tree trunks or the height of a tree or the distance between two objects. My second tip is about visiting outdoor places. Of course, it's really interesting to visit somewhere new and exciting, but there's a lot of value in coming to the same place again and again. What happens when you come back to a familiar place, like a route of, of a walk that you take with your child or a place in your yard or a favorite trail or park, is that you can observe the changes that are happening around you. Each day, something different is happening in that same place. Your child will get to know that place really well and start to notice the differences in the colors of the leaves, in the animals that might be there. Visit that place from season to season or even from day to night and note the changes there. You can record in a notebook, on a phone with a camera, or using your colored pencils in a drawing. You can look closely with a magnifying glass, or you could use that bowl and spoon to dig deeper and look beneath the surface. My next tip is about physical literacy. We've been talking a lot about math and language literacy, but using our bodies in smart ways is learning as well. Challenge your child when you're outdoors to climb, balance, jump, throw, catch, and move through space in a different way. Of course, make sure the space is safe and you're supervising closely. And remember that pot I showed you? I told you it would be a game changer and support your child's outdoor learning. If you have a pot, a flower pot or pail like this, and leave it at your front door, whenever you're out on a walk, your child can collect some treasures. Maybe they will be stones or seeds or leaves. And before they come into the house, you can have them empty their pockets and put their treasures inside the pot or pail. That way, you'll always have materials at the ready for sorting and gluing and counting, a ready supply of learning materials from the great outdoors. Here's Jen with two more tips. Hi, I'm Jen from the region of Waterloo Library. One of my favorite activities to explore with children is math when I'm on the go. And a great way to do that is to explore patterns. Now, patterns can be simple. Today, I had collected some sticks and some leaves and I just created a simple pattern on a piece of paper. Or if I'm just out at the park, I might even just lay it down on the ground. If you have a little one who might be reluctant to engage in, if, if you're calling it a pattern, another way, to, another way to word it is to create art. So today I created a necklace with that string that was in my kit. So I just threaded some leaves on here. And this also works great if with wildflowers during that season as well. So just, uh, just was simple. We just did green, purple, green, purple, and it was great threading as well. Now for older children, I really encourage you to ask them to stop and see if they can find some patterns that are naturally occurring in nature. Where can they look for those things when they slow down? Now, I don't always carry a magnifying glass with me. So if you wanna take a closer look, a little bit of water in your jar just a tiny bit like that which is clear drinking water and I just roll I just hold it directly over the item that I'm exploring and just that little bit of water helps magnify the item and you'd be surprised how many how many naturally occurring patterns you can find in nature as well little ones are always attracted to collecting items when they're out and about so one of my rules of thumb is they can always collect whatever size container we bring along that day. So if it's a big container, lots of items, small container, a little bit less, but what are you gonna do with all these items afterwards? One of the, my favorite things to do is sorting. So usually we dump it out and I invite the child to make their own rule about sorting. How are you gonna sort today? Maybe it's gonna be all the red items together and the gray items together, or maybe you're going to do leaves versus rocks. 
whatever way your child chooses. I look to celebrate that as well. As an extension on that activity, I usually challenge them to see if they can sort all the items that they previously sorted that are in their bowl to a different rule. So maybe things like, is it smooth versus rough? Or maybe you're finding things wet or dry, or maybe by classification. Really any rule will do, but it's just the challenge of trying to sort them in different ways with the same items in the bowl. Now, um, as an extension on that too, for slightly older children who are getting the hang of sorting, I will often lay out the materials with a rule in mind and see if they can guess the rule based on how I sorted it. Thank you for joining us this evening. We hope that those tips were helpful for you. Be sure to check us out at rwlibrary.ca for lots of great virtual programs for your family.